Hi, this is Dr. Tom Knotts. I want to thank you for taking the time to join me for this tidbit on what's called a detachment disorder. I've worked with many people over the last 30 years that have come from abusive backgrounds, and one of the things that is very disturbing to them is when they come to salvation in Christ, I would say upwards of over 20% of them tell me that they can't feel the love of God, that, you know, they have no experience or ability to experience feeling his presence, the love he has for them, or even sometimes a love for themselves, others. Some don't even love their own children. They just are, they say they do and they know psychologically they do, but they don't feel an attachment. And that would be the correct way of saying it. And it's because of detachment disorder. Detachment disorder is a disassociative state. It happens when a child prior to the age of seven, eight-ish, before the frontal lobes are fully developed, is traumatized um, in a way that affects their body. So we're talking a physical type of abuse, a sexual type of abuse. And it doesn't occur from just a single instant. It has to be what's called a RA or a ritual abuse. It means something that happens over and over, at least you know several times. Uh, it's not uncommon when a father or a relative, a brother, a sibling, or somebody molests a girl that they go back and they just keep doing it. Every time they get the opportunity, they become their obsession or their muse. Well, what will happen is because they want the child to pretend to enjoy it, or they think the child enjoys it. But what happens is actually the child detaches from their emotions. They have to do this because the brain knows that the body is feeling pain. I, a child before the age seven, eight, a child before the, you know, being a, a later age teen, they don't have a developed body. They're not able to do things with an adult. They're not able to do things with anyone. They should not be touched sexually. They should not be manipulated sexually. And this goes for any type of sexual misconduct or molestation. Now what happens is because the pain is so severe, the body will detach from the ability to feel. It's a detachment disorder and it's then followed by a depersonalization disorder. The depersonalization keeps them from being angry about it, keeps them from becoming depressed because anger turned inward becomes depression. So the only way the child can deal with it, its brain in order to survive, is it'll detach from the body It'll depersonalize it, and once the depersonalization happens, it will then create a separate modeling center with a separate identity, the one that is daddy's plaything or whoever's molesting it, and it will have a disassociate amnesia stage, which means all the memories will be attached to that modeling unit, that disassociated identity, or what we would call a separate identity. That part of the brain will create its own modeling memory system it will fuse or put to sleep the main person and that one will come to the surface in order to placate or go through the experience. It does this in order to survive. A child can't defend itself, it can't fight back. Now the problem is, is when years go down the road and they're an adult and they come to salvation, they still are unable to feel. They're unable to give themselves emotionally to give or receive symbolically. I can't tell you how many men have told me that they feel like they're with a prostitute. That their wife, you know, acts like she's a prostitute. There's no feeling, no emotion. And um, it doesn't matter whether they climax or not. That has nothing to do with it. For the woman, she's unable to feel the presence and power of God. Why? Because if it was her father that was molesting her or a man that was an authority figure that she had trusted and bonded with, then that will be her identity with God. But it'll go even farther. She might not even be able to emotionally feel physically for her love. She'll be highly analytical, very critical, black and white thinking. She'll be very driven, purpose-driven. You know, it'll be a works-based have you gotten A's on your report card? Did you try harder? Have you done this? Don't do that. It's a lot of don't do's and you should do. They're very critical. So this is Dr. Knotts. And the problem is, is when you can't feel and experience the love of God, if you come from a trauma-based background, 
And most of the time, people don't realize that's what it is. It's not until I open up their minds, keeping them awake, but taking them past the fourth layer of the brain and letting them see the trauma. And um, I've had individuals to where the trauma started in Muslim homes when they were just six months old. Uh, in many cultures around the world, it's very common for them to train up one of the daughters to be sexual and ill you know, place their penis in their mouth. They will begin molesting them and sodomizing them at a very early age. If you've gone through that kind of trauma, you're unable to con connect with the Lord God, but you know you're saved. You're unable to feel emotions. Pray this prayer. True God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your Bible tells me that you love me. Matter of fact, you loved me so much, Jesus came to earth, took on the form of man, suffered as no man has suffered, more than I have, bled and gave his life so I could have his life. Father, I forgive those who have hurt me. I ask that you would forgive them also. I pray that you would help me to forgive even those things I'm unaware of. I pray that you'd remove the wedges that have been driven into my psyche, shattering my heart. Remove the pain, remove the trauma, remove the memories. Take the biokinetic, the physiological impact out of my body, the molecular kinetic aspects of my body, reversing it to permanently erase the memories in my orifices and where I've been molested, raped and hurt to remove the dendrites, the soma and the axiom within my brain and all the neural impulses and their impact, remove the long-term memories and their effects. And I pray and ask, because you say in your word that you will restore what the locusts have eaten. I ask that you would reattach me to my heart, to my feelings, to my emotions that you would reroute my neural pathways of my brain so that I no longer fear being touched, so that I no longer fear giving myself to someone, that I will not consider it being used if I am married, but I will be able to give and receive true love. But most importantly, remove the things that are keeping me from experiencing your love, Father, through Jesus Christ and the indwelling of your Holy Spirit. Attach me so I can feel overwhelming thy holy presence and so that I can love thee. I ask that you would do this in Christ Jesus' name, and I will give you all the praise. This is Dr. Nods. I still counsel two or three people a week as much as my heart will allow me. I haven't been able to do a video in about a month because I've been in and out of the hospital again, but I do pray that the Lord richly blesses you. You can have the ability to experience the fullness of Christ's love, and he can take away those fears and give you the ability to give yourself completely to him, opening yourself up and being vulnerable in order to experience the fullness of the love that God has for you. In Christ's name, may the Lord richly bless you as you endeavor to know him.